some collaborators from the, from the Norwegian uh, Institute of Marine Research and uh, the Icelandic Marine and Freshwater Institute. And we worked, as I said, on deep domain adaptation applied to automatic fish age prediction. So a little bit as a motivation behind this work is uh, that uh, you, you may know that perhaps in uh, marine research and resource management, the estimation of the age distribution of fish stocks is very important in order to be able to maintain sustainable fisheries. So one of the procedures which is used for age reading requires experts to analyze uh, calcified structures which are located in the inner air of the fish. And these uh, structures are actually called otoliths. So what the experts are going to do is to analyze the images of these otoliths. So first of all, this process is time consuming. And the other problem is that it is as well challenging. Because if uh, we take an otolith that belongs to a 12 years old fish, you may have different ways of analyzing the annual growth zones that will enable to tell that this fish is actually 12 years, as you may see in the blue dots that are presented in the otolith image. So all in all, the process is challenging and time consuming. So it would be great if there was some way to automate the process to be able to obtain in a more efficient manner the fish age distribution. Actually, there has been some research that uh, was done towards this automation. And there was a couple of papers that were published uh, with, uh, with this respect. So a paper that was published in 2018 by Moen et al. and in 2020 by Ordoña et al. So basically what the authors did is that they analyzed otolith images from uh, the Institute of Marine Research of Norway, and uh, they trained neural networks, and they obtained uh, very satisfactory results. So as you can see in the scatter plot at the bottom part of the, the slide, see that we have the, the model predictions against the human predictions, and you see as well that the scatters have different sizes. But this is due to the fact that we have uh, the, the radius of the scatters, which is proportional to the probability density of the data. The main thing that you see is that the model predictions are pretty well aligned with the main diagonal, which means that the neural network predicted the age of the otolith in a satisfactory manner. So what we would expect is that if we take this model and we apply it to similar images than the Institute of Marine Research, we would expect that the model would perform equally well. And we call these uh, similar images the images from the source domain. The problem is that usually we have images acquired in new environments, which is I call the target domain. And in this case, you have a big problem in the model performance. You can see now in the model predictions obtained on the left-hand side that the neural network performed completely an overestimation of the ages of the fish with these new images. And actually what you have is a domain shift between the source domain and the target domain. And this might be explained by the fact that the two labs have different acquisition uh, protocols. So uh, in the source domain, you can see that we have some uh, luminosity conditions that are different. We generate some shadows in the background. And in the target domain, you also see that we have some tags in the upper part of the images. So what we propose in this paper is to bridge the performance gap between the source and the target domains by using unsupervised domain adaptation, such that the model predictions now are pretty well aligned with the diagonal or as well as, as well aligned as we can. So we propose investigating one approach of unsupervised domain adaptation that could be applied to automatic fish prediction, such that already trained neural network models could generalize to novel autolit data sets from other labs without the need of extra labeling effort. So our approach uses different information in different neural network modules. So in the source classifier, we use ages from the source domain, labeled ages, and then images from uh, the source domain. And then in the domain adaptation component, we use images from the source domain and images from the target domain. Then in the target classifier, we will use images from the target domain. Another important thing is that 
the three components will share the part of the same weights and the same architecture. But as you see in the whole process, no labels at all from the target domain were used. So the source and the target classifiers, they correspond to the train neural network presented in the paper that I mentioned to you previously, the Ordonia et al. paper, uh, that was uh, originally trained with images from the Institute of Marine Research of Norway. And uh, you may recognize that uh, this architecture is uh, the one from the VGD19 model where uh, batch normalization was included. As well, the classification unit was slightly changed. Then if we move on to the domain adaptation component, it's actually based on the Pogan's design, which was presented in the Liu and Tuzel paper. And the Kogan consists of a couple of gener generative adversarial networks, GAN1 and GAN2. But before I start describing this whole architecture, let me just comment that there were plenty of other options that we could have used for this unsupervised domain adaptation but we decided to go for the Kogan because it showed some promising results on other domain adaptation tasks. So what happens is that the generative models take a vector Z as input and they generate a set of images, G1 of Z and G2 of Z. And as previously described by, the, by Roland, actually these images are input into the discriminators that are going to compute the probabilities if the generated images are real or fake. So note that the discriminators here, they have the same sort of architecture as the source and the target classifiers, but just that we exclude the classification unit. As in the original paper, what we do is that we impose a weight sharing constraint such that the first layer of the generator share the small and as well the layers of the discriminators. And these weight sharing constraints enable us to learn a joint distribution of images without the need for correspondent supervision. So then the generative and discriminative models can be trained jointly via solving a minimax two-player game that will involve uh, the following value function, which uh, combines the information from the GAN1 and the GAN2. So we solve simultaneously the age classification problem in the source domain together with the domain adaptation problem. And the domain adaptation gives us a, a, a B loss that we can combine then with the classification loss to obtain a total loss that we will optimize for. Finally, our target classifier is gonna be able to predict the ages in the target domain. And again, you see that no labels in the target domain were used. So let's move on to the experimental results. So we experimented with autolith images from uh, the Norwegian Institute of Marine Research, which was our source domain, and the autoliths coming from the Icelandic Marine and Freshwater Institute was considered as our target domain. In our experiments, what we did is that we used two different versions of the data. The one that we denote baseline data, which is actually the original image of the otolith, which is resized by 2 to 4 times 2 to 4 pixels for training purposes. And then we also have the standardized data, where basically the images are transformed such that we suppress differences in background. So all the pixels of the background are set to black. And we also suppress differences of sizes between the different autoliths, such that the origin of the autolith is preserved. And uh, the most important thing is that we preserve as well the colors of the autolith, the original autolith. So this is not changed during standardization. So what we did is that we use a little bit more than 3,500 samples in the source domain and a little bit less than um, 3,000 for the target domain. And what we also uh, did is that we used a small validation set of images to choose the uh, hyperparameters of the, the models that we were going to train. And once we were satisfied with uh, the model, what we did is that we repeated experiments for five different runs. And we kept in all the runs exactly the same parameters between the models. And finally, what we do is that we report the results on a target test set. 
So the performance of the, the models is evaluated in terms of a root mean square between age prediction and read age by human experts, or the two versions of the data, the baseline and the standardized. And to better understand this uh, table, let's pay attention at the second column, which represents the lower bound model. So this lower bound model is basically the trained model using label data from the Norwegian lab that was applied in the target data. And then the last column represents the upper bound, which is basically the trained model using data from Iceland and now having the age labels revealed. So in a way, these lower and upper bound models serve as a soft indicators to evaluate the performance of the Kogan model. So the result that we need to take away from this slide is that basically the standardized domain adapted results are better than the baseline. And these you can see in the values of the error reduction rate, which is uh, represented in uh, brackets, where you see basically that the standardized gives us a better error reduction rate compared to the baseline. Finally, what we see as well is that over the five runs, uh, the RMSC doesn't vary a lot. It remains relatively stable and consistently, we see that the standardized RMSC is better than the baseline one. Let's now look at the model predictions against the human predictions to evaluate now in a more qualitative manner our domain adapted results. So on the left, what you see is that we have our lower and upper bound models, and we see that the lower bound completely over predicted the ages. And this trend is basically corrected when we apply domain adaptation as so shown in the second and third scatter plots, where uh, we computed the median over the five runs per predicted sample. So when comparing the results between the standardized and the baseline, we see that basically there is a, the standardized, which gives us a closer result to the upper bound model, more aligned towards the diagonal. And this might be explained by the fact that the domain adaptation problem is simpler for the standardized case, because then the model can focus more on the internal part of the otolith and doesn't need to concentrate on noise, which is in the background. The last result that I wanted to share with you is the variability of the Kogan model predictions that we can have for human prediction age across the different runs, for the baseline on the left and the standardized on the right. And I decided to represent these as uh, box plots. So for example, if here I take the age human, the human prediction of four, we see that the baseline models over the five different runs, they are going to predict ages from four to nine, which is a pretty high variability. And we also denote with this uh, uh, red X mark, the mean of predictions of the upper bound model. So there are some uh, interesting takeaways from this slide. The first one is that we have a tendency to over predict the younger ages and a tendency to under predict the older ages, and both for a baseline, but as well for, for the standardized data. And this might be related to the fact that we have less training samples within these age ranges. The other thing is that if we focus on now on ages which are lower than 12, we obtain results which are closer to the upper bound model for the standardized data, as well, there is less variability in the predictions over the five run. Then for ages that were older than 12, for the baseline data, there is perhaps slightly less variability. Standardized is giving results which are closer to the upper bound model. And uh, this brings me to the conclusion. So we explained Exploited a label utterly data set from Norway on the performance on those images to it from label images from. I presented in this talk and supervised the main adaptation compared to a lower bound. Which were floated down. So, all standardized 
would be very interesting to, to know because we still have some variability in predicts here with the Kogan model. And it would be in the predictions uh, from uh, the and now we have our human predictions, the one from perhaps the, for the same autolytes, the ages predicted by other readers from other lab intakes. And uh, if we would like to, to validate the proposed approaches on data sets as well that do not necessarily come from Iceland, but as well from other labs. And with this, I would like to thank you your attention.